Shinger, and I want to thank the wonderful Sharon for allowing me the privilege of hosting this show. She's been doing this for quite some time now, and I feel very honored to be here. And today I have my guest, Amber Wilburn, who has this amazing display of art that you see here, and we're going to cover what she has for us today. Hi, Amber. How are you? Hi. Fabulous. Great. So um, how long have you been an artist? It looks like you've been an artist for a really long time from the <laughs> looks of this stuff. Um, I think just probably since I was born. I don't know. Uh, I've been drawing since grade school. Um, always loved uh, to draw, doodle in class, got trouble in, <laughs> got in trouble a lot for that. <laughs> but um, always loved art just in general mm -hmm. and um, I didn't really get into fine art and painting I started in uh, junior high um, really started appreciating it because they offered you know classes more mm -hmm. you know in detail classes in that grade and and I just loved it um, so you're kind of hooked ever since yes yes it's always yeah. been a part of my life uh, well so. I can I can see that you definitely have a lot of, uh, of talent now you have a wide array of pictures. So we're going to start, I mean, there's just so many different themes. So we're going to start with this particular one we have right here. Um, can you tell us about the, the painting and the people in this? This one um, I chose to bring because it's, it's very sentimental to me. Um, this is my family portrait. And I have Beautiful five. Family. <laughs> thank you. I have five sisters. Your poor dad. <laughs> <laughs> and those are my parents in the middle. And um, it, it has sentimental value to me because my father passed this year in 99. And um, it just shows just youth and I just love the painting. I love watercolors. I love playing with watercolors and all the different aspects of it. And so that's why I chose to bring it. Just something really sentimental to me. Well, I noticed too that they all look like they're around the same age group. It's hard mm -hmm. to know who's older and who's younger and stuff. Is there a reason why you chose to do it in that fashion? Um, just I, if we, I, well, they're all women. So women mm -hmm. don't want to show their, you know, the age difference between True. us all. So True. I, you know, I was graceful. Do, do all of us at our senior year portraits and um, so they really appreciated that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they did. Because yeah. I don't want anybody to know my age yet. So. <laughs> I'm not ashamed so. of it. It's just, you know, it's a girl thing. Mm -hmm. So now, um, let's start with the ones behind you. Okay. Um, there's the furthest one, and you see one over on the end, and it has a pyramid and the camel. Now, where, what inspired you for that particular painting? Um, these next few that we're going to look at are a series that I'm still working on, most recent. Mm -hmm. um, motivated from my trip to the Mediterranean. So I took lots of pictures when I was there, obviously, and from those I composed paintings. Mm -hmm. And so this is, uh, this is a uh, place in Egypt, obviously, it's recognizable, the Pyramids of Giza. And mm -hmm. um, just one of the locals on the camel. and. So this is actually it. a painting of something, a picture that you took. In the sense, I used pictures that I took as references. Mm -hmm. I try to stay away from just copying photographs. Right. You know, try to reinvent it in some way, but... Put your creative flair mm -hmm. to, the, to yeah. the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, like the, the landscape in the background, the cityscape, mm -hmm. that isn't really there. The pyramids aren't, they're kind of far off. From the yeah, city. I wouldn't know. I haven't been there. <laughs> Would like to go there, but I haven't but been But it's just, um, and, and it was an amazing trip, so it inspired me to, to do a series of, of the different places that I went in the Mediterranean, Egypt being one of them. So now, well, where, what's the location in the next picture next to that? Um, tell us? Venice. <laughs> Ooh, in Italy. Ooh, yeah, I yes. love that one. One of my one of my favorite places to to go. I, I all they're all gonna be my favorites, just to tell you. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's okay. I'm like that too. I have like twelve favorite songs. Um, so the one next to that one, where it has the brick uh, building, um, that's not recognizable, but it is the Acropolis in um, in Greece. Mm -hmm. So you. You would normally recognize the enormous pillars, you know, ancient um, remains there. And so it, there's, the amount of pictures I took there is ridiculous. And to depict something that wasn't totally recognizable was kind of my goal. So just, um, just 
a really, really beautiful landscape there. Mm -hmm. it's, and I love the colors that you picked. I love the, um, they just blend well, and they're, um, they're very appealing as far as color-wise goes. They're very soft and subtle, and, uh, you know, I really enjoy looking at them. Now, now we have a d completely different collection. We, um, so we'll start with here, this one in the middle here. Um, can you tell us about the pieces from here to the right? Yes, those are kind of along the same lines because I bought a lot of jewelry <laughs> when I while you were there on the trip. <laughs> I bought a lot of jewelry there, and while I was taking a class up north in, uh, with um, a teacher, she wanted me to really spread out in in mm -hmm. my um, ability and just think of something on a totally different level. And so I started taking photographs of the jewelry mm -hmm. and playing around with sketching it and came, ac came about doing these paintings in a totally different way versus me maybe sketching out with pencil this first. I would lay the whole painting out and then paint it. But these, I just went at it as a total freer form, just started shading in colors and um, not really recognizing it as Julie right away. You know, mm -hmm. things blurred and it was a, it was a very wonderful learning experience. So it's very contemporary mm -hmm. looking and at the same time um, very, um, I don't know, I, I want to use the word classy. Uh, you know, this one, this piece over here kind of reminds me of a piece that would be more um, Native American mm -hmm. piece. So now, the jewelry pieces that you picked, these were all ones that you got on your trip? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like, this is an earring that I, I purchased in Croatia, and the filigree of gold and the level of their jewelry is absolutely beautiful. So just to start with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I just worked on the intricacy of, of the of that piece and then you know this this is an, a necklace from Egypt actually and their beadwork is real fine and um, it does have a Native American look with the sheath type mm -hmm. and yes. this one is from Turkey on the end mm -hmm. um, it was a silver piece with black onyx and um, it just, it was a lot of fun to do something really different, more modern than my typical landscapes or portraits. Right, and then we have the one right behind me, this one here, um, which looks like a, a bangle. Yeah, that was a silver piece also from the bazaar in Turkey, and um, I couldn't get enough of that stuff. And it's wonderful. You just put it up there and they weigh it. Well, I've seen like, <laughs> some of the Turkish jewelry. They just have some really gorgeous pieces that I probably would have to pay a lot of money to bring all those pieces back that I would fall in love with so yeah. it's good I'm not in Turkey I would be in <laughs> trouble my husband would shoot me so now um, what inspired you to pick these particular pieces of jewelry there's just you know so um, many pieces just that you when I was shopping or oh no as far as <laughs> as far as painting but yeah painting um because I'm sure you bought a lot more than that oh of course yes yes um just the detail in and I mean for a bracelet you look at that painting and you just see all these tiny little um design in it and it was just I was like I want to blow that up I want to show the detail in those pieces and mm -hmm. and make it not even recognizable as a piece of jewelry almost so right it's absolutely it's, it's absolutely gorgeous now you brought some other pieces as well yes so I'm going to move this one I brought this one and it's not finished because it's kind of I, I like to admit that because I think half of the paintings at my home right now are not finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think a lot of artists can relate to that. Um, now, is it that you just kind of start to change your mind and decide, eh, uh, I've lost interest, or I... You, if you, you come to a, uh, a plateau of, I don't know what to do next, or in this case, this is supposed to be in my series on my trip to the Mediterranean, and this is the Top Copy Palace, mm -hmm. and there wasn't anybody in the picture I took, but I felt like it needed something to draw you in. And so I started painting this lady, and, and, and then I really didn't know where to go with it. I didn't, I, I didn't want to, it was like the fear of putting in this not right looking face. Right, <laughs> so, right. So you're just kind of like, ah, let's well, just pause it for well, now. Well, maybe I could have you model for there it. There you go. See, Put maybe Arlene. That's, yes. Yes, that's my goal. It's going to be Arlene here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> maybe for real one day. Right. Okay. Um, 
The next one. This is actually the first painting I did in junior high. And that is amazing. That's your very first one. Yes. Um, my older sister paints with watercolors, and I thought that was just amazing. You know, I was 12 and 13, mm -hmm. learning kind of from her how to use watercolors. And um, I entered this painting in to uh, the Peace Day contest in, in, in junior high, and they picked it. And it was, of course, when you're a kid, you just think that's amazing. And mm -hmm. they ended up painting it on the outside of the school, Redwood Middle School in Napa. Wow. So. Uh, wow, that is really awesome. So what a privilege that was. Now, you weren't expecting that, I'm sure. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. No. It was just kind of that crossover from sketching and doodling and and I loved horses. Well, All and, my and, and your very first painting on top of that. <laughs> yeah. You know? So now, is the painting still there on the school? I don't know, actually. I haven't been there in, in, a, in a while. So. so anybody in Napa, you need to go see if this painting <laughs> is uh, still at Redwood. Yes. <laughs> that is really wonderful. That, and that's a really cool story. So that must be very sentimental to you then. It is, yeah. I just wanted to sh it's nice to see how the artist grows, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and this kind of was my next phase of watercolors. This is one that I entered into the fair. My father always encouraged me to um, be involved in local art and, you know, in contests and, you know, just, and it really helped me grow. It helped me appreciate that I did actually have some talent. Right. You know? Which you do, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when you're really young and, you know, it's, it, was, it was really encouraging. I got first place on this at the Napa County Fair, and so I've kept it. One of the first ones that I entered, and um, another again, sentimental water. piece. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> another sentimental. That's really beautiful. I love fuchsias. The colors, yes, it's very pretty. And then moving on through uh, high school, I studied different mediums, and um, I, I have a lot to uh, to thank for my teacher in high school, my mm -hmm. art teacher there. He really uh, encouraged me and I think that's important when you you know are going through school to have somebody really be a mentor. It sounds like your your father was a big supporter absolutely of yes your artwork and stuff and I think that really helps is when we have people who support you know because I have friends who are artists and, and in many different facets whether that be acting or um, you know painting or whatever else and they're just like go get a real job <laughs> you know or, and things like that so I think it's really important to be supportive of people's dreams and it sounds like you had that backing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, tell us about this particular um, painting. Is it somebody that you knew or is something that you saw from your mind? Um, it was a, a, I had a, um, a tiny little image from a, uh, a magazine that I would get, or it's a, a newsletter from the Delaware Indians, because that's my ancestry. Mm -hmm. I'm Native American. And so I picked this little picture of, I think it was, Something bull. It sounds horrible. I don't even remember his name. It was so long ago, but I just took this little black and white photo and um, blew it up with charcoals and um, just. I love the profile of this. It's a great profile. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a photographer, so for me, even in a photography standpoint, that mm -hmm. would be an amazing shot. I think so, and very nice um, lighting as well with the shading. So, thank you. Um, and then I'm gonna pull this one down, and you have one more. This one's really interesting too. Yeah, this one just shows that, you know, I like to work in all kinds of mediums, in all genres, and I think to bring a portrait, you know, of a face. That was one of the main things I love to draw. From the very beginning, I would draw women's faces, especially with their eyes, and, mm -hmm. and just, I just was fascinated with drawing eyes all the time. And so I've, I've always drawn um, portraits, and it's just one of my favorite things. Now, is this a particular model that you had, or is it a picture that you saw that you inspired you? Um, it, it was a, uh, a photograph in a, in a uh, probably a, Vogue magazine or something like that. So mm -hmm. I think her name was Shalom, mm -hmm. and I just thought she was beautiful. So, so my question mm -hmm. is, is that do you, so if somebody wanted their family p painted um, or drawn, um, would you do something like that? 
Absolutely, yeah. I, I've done, I've done that. <laughs> I've done, done pictures of their pets, <laughs> mm -hmm. paintings of their, you know, whatever. I've done paintings of people's boats. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, it's neat to have that touch, you know, added to a something, you know, your family or whatever it is. Um, that art, that artistic touch. So now, art's not the only thing you do. You do other things. <laughs> Yes, I have my hands on a lot of things. Yes. You want to share that? <laughs> well, with us? just I mean, for me, and probably many artists will understand that to create is just it's in your blood almost, you know. And I and I'm uh, I don't always paint, so I want to find things to do with my hands or whatever it is. So I got into making jewelry, and I kind of been in and out of that. And just rec you know, more recently, I've pursued it as something to maybe sell and mm -hmm. because people just always will comment on my jewelry and say, oh, well, I made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, But now yours is a little unique in the fact that you take older pieces and refurbish them kind of in a way. Yes, yes. Well, because my sisters would always <laughs> say, oh, I have this necklace and it broke or my friends would be like, oh, I don't like this piece anymore. Maybe I'd wear it if it looked like that. And so I would say, hey, well, give it to me. I'll I'll change it up for you or, you know, I'll fix it and maybe add something and people really have caught on to that. And I think that's really popular right now, reclaimed things, you know, reuse, recycle. I think people really like that mm -hmm. and I like to find old vintage things and create something, you know, new out of it, something, you know. Well, and speaking of, I'm wearing one of the pieces. So um, this is one of the pieces that Amber made. And um, she brought some with her, too. So I'm going to show one of those as well, or several of them, actually. So now we have this piece, which is absolutely, that's cute little bow there. And, and there's like a cute little birdcage on there. Yeah, it so was just a find. Lovers. You know, I go to garage sales. I have people just say, oh, I don't want this necklace anymore, and I'll just take it apart and make it into something else, you know, or... Um, estate sales, you know, thrift stores, like I found this ribbon is from um, Alice's Consignments in Napa and she had this vintage French ribbon and it just feels so luxurious and I thought, oh, I'm going to make something fabulous out of that. <laughs> and you did. You <laughs> definitely accomplished that. And here is another piece that's very unique. So if you guys can see that, absolutely beautiful and unique so not everybody would have and that's the cool part about having jewelry made is that nobody else is going to have it it's going to be a unique item so if you guys like to be different than everybody else you definitely have to look up amber and check out some of her jewelry pieces because she definitely does things differently so there's another piece do you mind sending that over there for me so i called my business the jewelry horse feathers mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's I have some of the pieces for sale on Etsy there's that one so everybody go to Etsy now is is it under horse feathers on Etsy yes it is okay and now how would they get a hold of you um, when it comes to if they want you to make a unique piece for them or if they want you to paint a portrait of their families um, what's the best way to contact you? Well, if you go online, I have sort of a um, resume curriculum vitae online, mm -hmm. and that's amberwilburn76.wix.com. Mm -hmm. And um, if you go to my projects, it'll have links to my jewelry at, at, on Etsy, Horse Feathers, and it'll have a link to some of my artwork that's displayed and also the graphic design and other things that I dabble in. So you can, you know, leave your contact information on the, uh, to fill out, you know, at the end there's a contact page. So, mm -hmm. um, or just my um, email for Horse Feathers is Horse Feathers for You. The now, is it the number four? The number okay. four, letter U, at okay. Gmail. So Horse Feathers, number four, and then the letter U at gmail.com. And so now you had something that you wanted to show Sharon, the wonderful Sharon. Oh, yes. Well, I wanted to leave a little gift for her, a little <laughs> parting gift. This is um, a painting that I had done for somebody, and um, they ended up not 
buying it and I said you know what I'm gonna keep it for myself and I've had so many people request to buy it now it's and so I've made prints of it so it's it's pretty famous so I'm gonna sign this copy for Sharon I'm gonna leave it here to keep it here in her studio and um, just a little parting gift this is um, a famous dancer from early 1900s, 1920s, hmm. and she was considered so risque <laughs> in the way she was dressed in film in the film industry. You should even. see everybody now, right? I know, and that's why I chose her as just like compared to now. <laughs> I mean, this was so risque. So, do one you of remember my her name pieces, by chance? You know, I don't, because once again, it was just a little snip in a magazine I saw somewhere and I just loved the image. I, I think it would be easy to research and pull up who mm -hmm. it was. There was a few dancers in the film industry, black and white. Mm. So well it's beautiful. Just, she I has love that, the colors. Yeah, the gaze in her in her eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. And so um, Sharon, that is for you. And um, now you also do other things as well. You talked about the graphic design now. Um, uh, what about uh, your singing abilities? Oh, we're going to bring that up too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the Amber Show. <laughs> <laughs> it is today. Um, yeah, I've been involved in music since I was young also. Again, my father put me in piano <clears throat> as a child, and I despised it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I... Um, I quit at a young age with piano, but I realized, you know what, I I do love music and learned guitar. I was involved in a few bands through high school doing drums, and and uh, it's just been with me. I can't kick it. So Now, how do they hear you? What, are you singing anywhere, or can they go somewhere to listen to you? Um, recently, I have recorded with... Um, Come Get It Records, mm -hmm. Wayne DC is the CEO, and he has posted um, through Reverb Nation mm -hmm. um, our first cover song single, and it's um, under Amber May, M-A-E, mm -hmm. on Reverb Nation, and um, it's featuring Neff, one of his other artists, and it's very exciting. It's a little different. Um, I'm more, I sing kind of folk and you know, blues is kind of my background, and um, he's really twisted it around into something really, really, just really cool. Really fun. So, yeah. Now, um, so once again, uh, you know, we want to thank you for joining Arts in Action. Um, our time's almost up. So, Amber, um, they can find you on Reverb Nation. They can reach you at Horse Feathers, the number four, and the letter U at gmail.com. And I want to make sure that you guys know to watch our shows, um, Arts in Action, on Saturdays at 5 p.m. and on Sundays at 2.30 p.m. You can also check us out on www.vcat.tv. So that's the letter V, C, A, T, dot TV. And you can join us and see all of our wonderful shows. So thank you for coming, Amber. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate it.